side of the plastic planet. I am your host, Knickknack, hanging out with you guys. I just played a little bit of Space Invaders back here on my arcade one-up machine. Uh, that game is ruthless, by the way. Uh, that thing was, uh, that is the officially official like old school arcade version of that game and it is designed to suck quarters i can maybe only get like 15, 14 1500 points high score on that it's freaking brutal but anyway that's not what we're gonna talk about today uh, i got a nice really cool eclectic toy haul to show off to you guys today uh some of it's actually some souvenirs not all of them are toys but they're really really freaking awesome this is a really really cool uh haul to show you guys that i've kind of uh, 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 accumulated over the last week or so uh, and a big shout out uh, for the main part of this to my good buddy and often channel collaborator, my good buddy Uncle Pat. Yeah, he's a good guy. He uh, he came over to my house. We were uh, family. We were away up at Estes Park here in Colorado. We were up in the mountains this weekend, staying at the very world famous Stanley Hotel. That is the hotel that was made famous, that was inspired Stephen King's The Shining when he wrote it back in 1974. He actually stayed at that hotel and uh, inspired him to go on to write that novel, uh, even though the film, the Stanley Kubrick's film itself, was not was not filmed there. It was definitely inspired by the Stanley Hotel in uh, in uh, in Estes Park, Colorado. We do went on a ghost tour. We saw a ghost. Check it out. I'm going to show you the picture right now. I was in the bathroom by myself. It was all dark in there, and that motherfucker came up on me. See that ghost right there? That that nasty little that nasty little like like floating like like cranium with no jaw and a spinal cord yeah, that's scary shit true story that thing came up on me or maybe it's maybe it's the the flash reflecting off the tile and the brass in there uh that might be more likely it but nevertheless really really cool uh really really spooky fun up at the stanley hotel in estes park colorado but i also did get a lot of other cool shit so let's get to it right now uh and this is gonna be awesome all right let's do it right now Knickknacks Plastic Planet presents. It's a Knickknack Micro Moment. So first and foremost, this is really dumb, guys, but I, I couldn't really turn it down. I bought this at a Ross store uh, here in Denver, Colorado. Found it for a song of only $19.99. This thing is freaking huge. This is the this is the Silent Mary playset from Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, uh, Dead Men Tell No Tales. I've not actually seen this movie, but I just had to get this because it's a pirate ship, damn it! And it's going to look really cool down here in the archive room. Uh, it sort of looks like it's an Imagine X uh, like inspired playset, but I don't really actually see any Imagine X uh, labeling on this, so I don't know if it is or not. But nevertheless, it comes with a dinghy, comes with the, uh, you know, uh, all the cannon holds here. Uh, really, really cool. Got the crow's nest up here somewhere. And uh, the, 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 the steering wheel, really, really cool. Comes with a couple little figures, comes with like some, uh, comes with a, uh, a pirate, it comes with Captain Jack Sparrow, and it comes with a, uh, with, uh, I think the the wooden hold that goes right here, the the the, like the what would they call that? Like the statue thing that would go on the bow of the ship. So anyway, really really really, really cool, really kind of dumb, but I'm gonna enjoy getting this thing out and uh, and putting it up down here uh, on my pirate ship theme fish tank. That's kind of why I got it. I mean, it's really damn big, uh, but yeah, really really fun. So uh, yeah, this is cool. Uh, maybe I'll uh, show it off to you guys in a later video after I open it up, but I'm not gonna open it up today. All right, let's just keep moving. Let's keep this video short today because my videos have been really long lately. Alrighty guys, well the second thing I want to show off to you guys tonight, this is really eclectic. These are not technically action figures. These aren't technically toys. These would fall under the realm of souvenirs. Um, if you guys are a long time follower of the channel, you guys know that I'm a big, big, huge fan of natural history, particularly dinosaurs and things like that. Well, we went to a fossil shop up in Estes Park, Colorado, a very large, very cool fossil shop. And one of the benefits of living in the American West is the abundance of fossils and you can actually buy them. I mean, they're everywhere. Uh, so I did get a couple of, uh, from a couple fossils actually at this fossil shop. These are all pretty cheap. Now, if you, if you are familiar with natural history at all, and you're familiar with the local geography of the American West, you would know that Denver, Colorado sits on what would now be, or what would have been, you know, 65 million years ago and beyond and beyond that a large inland sea. So there's a lot of sea creatures, sea creature fossils, um, 
here in Colorado, uh, going back to the Cretaceous era uh, and, and further back than that. So I picked up a couple of these and you know, these were actually fairly cheap and part of me almost feels bad buying them because they feel like they belong in a museum or something. But again, they're in abundance out here. There's tons of them. Um, one of this was an Amenonite. As you can see, it's actually been shined up, which kind of sucks. They actually polished it. I don't know why they do that, but it's actually been polished. This was actually uh, lived about 65 million years ago. It was a large squid creature with this snail shell, but large tentacles came out here and it swam in the water uh, here in the inland sea of what, 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 what Colorado once was. So I got this Amenonite. This is really, really freaking cool. Again, it's been polished up. Um, I don't know, it's cool looking. I don't know why they would do that necessarily. Uh, I also got, now this is much, much older actually, mind you. And I know guys, this is highbrow shit here on the Plastic Planet. I mean, I do it all here. I mean, try to find an action figure show that actually shows off fossils too, and educational things. Yes, we do poop jokes and dick jokes here, but we also do natural history, which is really, really fun. Got a trilobite. This is a trilobite, as you can see right there. Um, he was just a little guy here. He's like, this is like basically like the ancestor of like modern uh, 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 snowshoe crabs and things like that. Uh, this guy lived between like 300 million and 500, or 500 to 300 million years ago during the Cambrian and died off during the Great Permian extinction just prior to the rise of the dinosaurs in the Triassic. So this guy had a really, as far as like survivors go, this thing lived, you know, species wise, lived for almost like 200 million years. This thing is nuts. Uh, so got a trilobite, I always loved trilobite since I was a little kid because there was a giant picture of a trilobite in uh, one of my first dinosaur books, which was one of those like uh, uh, time life, uh, history of the world kind of books and it had a giant trilobite on the first page of it as far as natural history goes. It was the same book that had all those like Carnegie dinosaurs, you know, that giant mural of the Carnegie dinosaurs, real classic stuff. Uh, classic, you know, 1930s, 19, 1940s era, you know, paleontology stuff. So anyway, had a trilobite. So this is really cool. Really glad I got this. He's just a little guy. Then, this is cool. This is really, really cool. So here's a mosasaur. This is the large, um, uh, a reptile in Jurassic World, uh, uh, the first Jurassic World film, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the big tank, and he, uh, you know, you remember this guy? Well, apparently this is a Mosasaur, if I'm to believe them. This is a Mosasaur too that I got. And you can also see some, uh, also some prehistoric fossilized shells um, in this as well. But this is a Mosasaur too. Hey, 15 bucks for this guys so this is really really cool um yeah really really neat and then also got another mosasaur tooth and this looks like a lady finger or something picked this up for my good buddy uncle pat uh, for his son who's a giant dinosaur enthusiast i mentioned uh, his son raptor red in the past on his channel picked this up for him uh for when he gets uh, back at the end of the summer he's visiting his mom got him this mosasaur tooth kind of looks like a shank doesn't it <laughs> yeah but this is really really freaking cool so yeah, I got this for about 20 bucks. So this is really, really cool. Um, really, really cool fossils. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of going off the beaten path. I know, but really, really freaking cool, right? All right, let's move on to some collectibles now. Alrighty, so getting down there on my list of acquisitions, and I, I, I promise this is going to be kind of a shorter video today. Um, I got this awesome lenticular uh, uh, framed picture from my local Hobby Lobby. I hadn't been to Hobby Lobby in several months, so it's kind of nice to go through been there and see everything is kind of fresh to my eyes because, like I said, I hadn't been there in a while. But this is really, really fun. It's a lenticular um, Star Trek uh, framed picture. And, of course, it is the ships of the original series. And it's lenticular, as I mentioned, so kind of moves around your eyes there. Uh, really, really cool. The main ship here is obviously the USS Enterprise. Now, if you'll notice, there's a couple uh, differences on this ship that you would normally see in most classic episodes of the original series. Uh, you'll notice these two stems coming out of the nacelles there and the larger uh, navigation dish below. That means that this is actually a pre-Captain Kirk uh, Enterprise, meaning this was either Christopher Pike's or even Robert April's uh, Enterprise uh, prior to the events of the original series. And I'm really nerding out on you guys on that one, but true. Uh, also, there is a, 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 a D7, I believe, Klingon battlecruiser down here, the classic D7 Klingon battlecruiser, the classic Romulan bird of prey down here with the signature uh, uh, hawk or, or raptor paint on there. And then you'll notice up above here is another Romulan ship. This is actually a modified D7 uh, Klingon battlecruiser that the Romulans were using. As you can tell, it's Romulan because, again, it's got that signature raptor uh, 
paint on the underside of it. Uh, this, this ship was prominently featured in the Enterprise incident, one of my very favorite episodes of the original uh, series. That was the episode when, when Kirk needed to, they needed to steal that Romulan uh, cloaking device off this bad boy. And so Kirk pretended to be crazy. And, and when they went aboard the ship and pretended he'd taken the Enterprise over the neutral zone against Starfleet, uh, against Starfleet orders and, 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 faked his death on board the uh, the ship there, and Kirk seduced the Romulan sub-commander. She was really spicy hot, wasn't she? Yeah, she was very neat. Uh, but seduced the Romulan sub-commander, and, and Kirk reboarded the ship, this time with, uh, with uh, Romulan ears, and stole, spoiler guys, stole that, 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 uh, that cloaking device, and they installed it on the Enterprise and got away. Very cool episode. Really dig that one. One of my favorites. So anyway, this is really, really neat. Really glad to have it. All right, guys. Well, last but certainly not least, and this this uh, this this next uh, acquisition or set of acquisitions, I should say, uh, goes with a huge shout out to my good buddy Uncle Pat, as I mentioned maybe earlier in the video. He hooked me up with these. I still owe him some money for them, actually. But uh, no one rides for free, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, I still owe him some buckets for this one. But that's okay, because these are absolutely awesome. I talked a little bit about these in my last video. And that is, of course, these awesome, awesome Star Wars Retro Collection Series figures uh, from Kenner Hasbro, or Hasbro, as it would be. Uh, he got me the whole freaking set of these. I got all of them down here. Really, really awesome. Of course, as you know, they're available at Targets exclusively for right now in the men's department, guys. Check the men's department. Now, I don't really go in the men's department a lot unless I want to buy a funky t-shirt like maybe this Led Zeppelin shirt I got on. But check out the men's department because that's where they're holding these on like a, a Father's Day end cap. And they're really hard to find. I thought literally I was never going to get these unless I either got a scalped for them, uh, you know, bought, bought, paid more than I, I would ever want to for them. Or B, I slept under that end cap and waited for them to restock. But as it would be by chance, good old Uncle Pat was in Target the other day and found the whole set, fired them up for me. So here they are. Big shout out to Uncle Pat. He actually came in my house. He, he, I had a package on the doorstep. He came over while we were in Estes Park, broke into my house, got that package in the house and left these for me as well. So it was like, it was like big old Santa Claus had come for a visit. So yeah, big shout out to Uncle Pat for that one. Thanks, buddy. So anyway, first and foremost, let's just, uh, let's just start with, uh, let's just start with, with these two. And I'm going to get to why in a moment. Uh, first one is a Han Solo. Oh, look at that. That's a beauty, isn't it? If I can get the light not to reflect in there. Yeah, that's a beauty. Look at that beautiful figure. And there's the back side of it. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what the 12 back, uh, original 12 back card looked like. I do not believe it is. Uh, again, these are retro. These are these are these are reproductions, I should say. And so, like this, uh, this is not a sticker. This is part of the part of the card. And then, of course, it is sort of, sort of made to be worn looking, as you can see by the edges. Um, that is deliberate. That is part of the packaging. Uh, maybe that's to set it apart from people who actually own the originals. So they don't feel like they're getting screwed over in value. Whatever. I love reproductions. I'm all about reproductions. If it allows the modern hobbyist to, to enjoy vintage figures just like we did, I, you know, enjoy a new one, not one that looked like it's been stuck up a dog's butt for 30 years. I'm all about reproductions. We're all about reproductions here on the Plastic Planet. This is absolutely freaking awesome. And here's Princess Leia to go along with Han Solo. This takes me back, guys. Little story about these two card back figures when I was a kid. Uh, I remember going on long road trips with my, my family when I was a kid. We lived in Montana, and Montana's a big, big state. And so when we'd go to visit relatives in Iowa, it was a very long, long trip. And I can remember sitting in the back of my dad's, um, I wanna say it was a Monte Carlo, it was a Pontiac, no, it was a Pontiac Grand Am. A big red Pontiac Grand Am with a white roof. I can remember sitting in a red carpet, red wall-to-wall -wall carpet upholstery in there. I can remember this. Now, this is ta I'm taking you guys back here. Bear with me. We are going back in time here, guys. We are going back in time to 1979. Things were different back then, guys. We didn't. They didn't. Our, my parents didn't strap us into car seats till we were 12 years old, like we do. No, my parents. You know, I can remember rolling around loose as a goose in the back seat on long road trips. And then, of course, my parents were up front, chain smoking you know, like chimneys, because I don't think they really understood the dangers of secondhand smoke back then. But it was miserable for my sister and I, and I can re literally remember being on the floor in that Pontiac, like sucking on the carpet so I wouldn't have to smell that cigarette smoke. 
really gross, but it's a true story. Sorry, mom and dad, it's a true story. Love you guys, you guys did great, but uh, love you, but it's a true story. Uh, I remember sucking on the carpet, basically, so I wouldn't have to smell the cigarette smoke. But anyway, I'm, I'm down on the floor in the old Pontiac Grand Dam, and I reach under the seat, and this was like a couple months before my, my birthday, probably my fifth birthday, and I pull out these figures. Not these exact figures, obviously, but the retro, or the original vintage ones of these figures. Uh, again, I was like four years old, maybe it would have been 1979, maybe, uh, maybe, probably not 1980, it was probably 1979. Pulled out these two figures out of the back, my parents made me wait till my birthday to actually get them. But that was really, really freaking cool to see these in the flesh, even back then. So to see these two figures now, really brings back that memory to me very very strong very very vividly so anyway that's not here or there but anyway looking really really nice there is the princess leia for you uh, that looks like a princess leia vintage figure to me and of course the back nothing really to write home about which ones else do we have here uh here's chewbacca we got chewbacca here you can get him without the light glare sorry guys um there's chewbacca looking really really good again these just look exactly like the damn thing Obviously, it's not the same as original vintage. Um, that, that can never be replaced, but it's really fun to get a representation of that original vintage feel, and that's definitely what these do. Uh, what else do we got here? Darth Vader, of course, my favorite. There is the Dark Lord of the Sith. And his lightsaber there. Full vinyl cape, looking absolutely gorgeous. I love, love, love the old graphics design. And Luke and Leia up there in the corner, that just brings back so many memories. Again, you can't take this sticker off, which is a shame, but I kind of understand why they did that. Very, very cool. Stormtrooper. Very cool. Looks gorgeous. Just really, really cool. Again, I'm sorry for the light. I hope I'm not totally, like, not being able to show you these very well because my studio lights are kind of reflecting off that, uh, that, that bubble. But, uh, yeah, it looks really, really good. And then last, but certainly not least, the coveted farm boy Luke Skywalker. Beautiful. And then of course there's the iconic scene with Luke Skywalker staring off into that romantic binary sunset of Tatooine where the hero's journey truly began. Yeah. <laughs> it's good shit, guys. Good shit. So yeah, there is Luke Skywalker even, even with his, as Mark Hamill stated, his lemon-colored hair because Mark Hamill actually, you know, always had, you know, he actually has like brown hair. But he always kind of, Mark Hamill himself, so I always kind of made fun of this action figure because of its lemon-colored hair. And, uh, you know, part of me almost wanted to argue with him. The point is, you know, not that I couldn't person, but I almost wanted to argue with him. The point, I'm like, dude, that's, 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 that's like Skywalker. That's what I grew up with. You had lemon-colored hair. I mean, like, the dude wouldn't know his own hair color. <laughs> that's kind of silly. But, uh, yeah, just it's, just it's just your perception is your outlook, I suppose. Yeah, that's really freaking cool. So anyway, yeah. So anyway, those are those awesome figures. I'm going to be hanging them up down here. Definitely wall candy for the archive room of the Plastic Planet. And once again, a big, 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 big shout out to my good buddy, Uncle Pat, for firing those up for me. All right, guys. Well, that's it right here on the Plastic Planet. I do have a couple other things, but I'm not going to show them off in this video. I got one and yes, two hot toy figures to get out of box for you guys. I'm going to be doing that in the next couple days. I also got some other fun stuff coming up for you guys. Uh, working on a little bit of a little bit of some theatrics for you guys here on the Plastic Planet. It's been a while since we've done that, so look for a new video coming up really soon. Hopefully, even maybe as soon as this weekend. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but you know, I always have other considerations besides this channel to uh, to deal with as well. So anyway, all right, guys. Well, like I said, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Plastic Planet. Please like, share, comment. Please do subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I'd really like to have you here each and every week. We have a god dang good time right here on the Plastic Planet. All right, guys. Well, that's gonna it's gonna wrap things up. Like I said, man, life is so so very 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 short, guys. So get out there, guys, and do it. It's plastic crap, especially this if you can find it. I'm I'm lucky. Uh, thank you again, Uncle Pat. All right, guys. Later. Love you. Bye.